Morning peeps and welcome back to the channel. I was a little bit offended this week when somebody accused me of being an egotistical maniac. They left out the narcissist part. Anyway, welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to talk about how we connect our potentiometers to our motor shafts. Now the way I'm doing this is via a M4 0.4 millimeter thread pitch furniture screw. Now conveniently, our motors, the ZD1735s, already come with a hole drilled in the center of the motor shaft. It's not quite large enough to take the M4, so we need to drill it out. And we'll use a 3.5 millimeter drill bit to drill that motor shaft out. Then you will need an M4 0.4 millimeter thread pitch tap. And you'll need to tap the motor shaft as shown in the video. So then we can screw our M4 0.4 thread pitch furniture screws into the end of the shaft. You're going to find yourself a six millimeter. This is a 40 millimeter in length. So a six millimeter, 40 millimeters in length diner bolt or a concrete bolt. All we're using for this is the sleeve. So you'll remove the nut, you'll take the pin out and you'll cut the top section where it's solid out here, around here, a nice straight cut. So then you end up basically with a little tube or a sleeve and this will become apparent while we do this very shortly so they're the items you need for your potentiometer to motor shaft connection in this next part of our build guys you are going to have to tap your motor shafts you're going to have to tap them with a m4 0.7 millimeter thread pitch tap now i'm going to take you through how to do that a little bit of a tricky process but it is doable for the diyer who's willing to have a crack so I'll take you through how to do that. Now, the demonstration is not going to be technically on our motor shafts because the doctor has already got his motor shafts drilled and tapped. So I can't show you how to do it that way. So I'm just going to cut a little bit around, which is going to be very similar to our motor shaft. And I can just take you through the process and the principles that you'll need to follow to successfully do this in your motors without any cock-ups. So what you're going to need to find yourself is a tap and die set. Now this tap and die set I obtained from the ever-present Aldi here in Australia, those naughty Germans. This was a set that ended up on special, uh, hadn't sold, and it was $24. And actually, surprisingly, it is made in Germany. So I got a German-made tap and die set from Aldi for $24.95 or something. It was a bargain. Now it's a basic tap and die but it has most of the common taps and dies that people would possibly end up using as a diy hobbyist i've got some other tap and die sets which are more sort of full-on and industrial but i'm trying to recommend something that the average joe doesn't have to spend you know 500 dollars on a tap and die set so you'll find something equivalent to this on flea bay or amazon probably for around that same sort of money it'll be a chinese made tap and die set for about 25 30 dollars just make sure um, that it has an m4 0.7 pitch tap because that's what we're using for our m4 0.7 pitch furniture screws now before we actually start drilling this guys we're going to make a mark on our drill bit at 20 millimeters so we know when we've reached our 20 millimeter mark simply put a ruler or your tape measure on your drill bit at the tip measure in 20 millimeters and with your sharpie make a mark right around your drill bit so you know do not exceed 20 millimeters in depth in your motor shafts in the ZD1735s or you're gonna end up in the casing. We don't want that, but we do need to be 20 millimeters. It'll be close, but you won't be in the casing. Trust me, I've already done this on my uh, motors without any problems. So you put that mark on your drill bit so you know when you get to this point, it's time to stop. Okay, so the doctor has cut uh, a little piece of round here. He's got it set up in his vise and he's found the center of his round and he's punched it. Um, ready to do this demonstration for you guys. Now, the beauty of the ZD1735 motors that I've recommended you guys buy, they already have a hole drilled in the center of the shaft. That's brilliant because it's in the center. It means that your potentiometer connection is going to be a nice, balanced connection. Okay, as mentioned, we are using uh, M4 0.7 pitch bolts. This is how you're going to tap it. So you're going to find a 3.5 millimeter drill bit does the job. Keeping in mind that these connections, they don't require a lot of strength. All they're doing is holding a flexible coupling. They're not having any force really put on them. So this works perfectly fine. Now you're gonna use a combination of all the skills and principles that we've used in all of our drilling. We're gonna use some kind of lubricant 
once again, our trusty WD-40. WD-40, once again, will do a great job. Now, your motor shafts already have a hole that's almost 3.5 millimetres, so you'll find this quite easy to drill out. You've just got to be careful because there's already a hole in your motor shaft. You really have to concentrate on keeping your drill straight as you're drilling in. This is a scenario, folks, where it is so easy to snap your drill bit off in your shaft. And if you do that, it is going to be a nightmare. So you just need to go really slowly. You've got a fairly small drill bit here. If you put too much pressure on it and you cock it, you will snap it off in that hole. I can guarantee that. Okay, I've got my hole started there. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of lubricant on. And you'll do this the whole time, even with your pre-drilled motor shafts, you'll put some uh, of your cutting fluid in first, right? A medium pressure, holding it as straight as you can. Same principle with how much speed we have, not too fast. And what we're aiming for here, ultimately for you guys, okay, you are wanting to get your drill bit in 20 millimetres, okay? We need it in 20 millimetres because our tap needs enough space to put a thread in without bottoming out. Our M4 bolts are cut at 30 millimetres in length, allowing 15 millimetres inside the shaft and 15 millimetres of our sleeve. Oh, I could just do this all day long. I'm getting close to 20 millimeters there now. This is the chuck we'll use to tap our motor shafts, okay? This is what it looks like. In my kit, this comes out, and it's separate, right? So what you'll do is you'll undo the end of your chuck here, depending on the size of your tap. Um, sometimes you don't need to take that off. You'll place your tap in the end of this, push it in as far as it'll go, put your chuck back on, do your chuck up tight. You'll put your T back in, and you've got something to hold while you do that up. Okay, now like our drilling, we are going to absolutely keep our drilled hole here lubricated for our tap. Tapping is one of those uh, dark arts that requires patience, and it requires a little bit of smarts. You don't just keep running a tap in for as long as you can, or I can guarantee you will snap this off. Taps are hardened, so they're very brittle. So we're only going in probably five turns, then we're coming back out. And as we go in a bit deeper, this will become even less. We'll do one or half a turn. You clean off all the chips, keep it lubricated. You have to keep this straight when you start too. Okay, you've got to keep it as straight as you can until it bites and starts threading. Now, as you go in further, your because your tap is tapered, it'll get harder to turn. Okay, as soon as it starts giving you some resistance, carefully back straight back off. Your chips are starting to build inside and they're binding your tap in the hole. If you keep going, uh, you'll come to a stop, okay, you won't be able to keep going and then when you try and back out, the chips will bind, you will snap your tap. Snap your tap, snap your tap, snap, snap, snap your tap. So be very careful doing this. Yes, I am seeking uh, medical help. They're not much bloody help, I can tell you that. Okay, I'm starting to get some binding there now. Very carefully, hear that? That's what you've got to be careful of. If I kept going, 
It would have been El Snapo. Snap your tap, snap your tap, snap your tap, snap your tap. The doctor is off his head and we're going in basically until we are bottoming out into our drill. Right, yeah, you can see there when I was turning that, it was almost twisting the tap. It's time to back back out. So this does take a little bit of time. You must be patient doing this, otherwise it will be an absolute cock up. Unlike my little piece around here that I could just cut again and start from scratch, you will not be able to do that on your motor shafts. So if you are not feeling confident doing this, I recommend that you take your motors to an engineer, to a local engineer, because then it's all responsibility on them and not you. See how I'm virtually getting a quarter of a turn before I need to back off. Like I said, this will take you a little bit of time, but to do this successfully and not snap your tap off inside your shafts, you have to go slowly. Now, in a minute, I'm gonna mark my tap to see what my depth is, because I think I'm getting close. Certainly close enough, because once you've got this thread on this, even if it hasn't gone the full 20 millimeters, that doesn't matter. You'll have enough. Yeah, that's it. So I'm bottomed out there. My tap is now bottomed out on the inside where my drill has ended in its depth. I dare not go any further or disaster uh, will be the result. So I'm gonna mark my tap here and I can measure it and I'll know that that is indeed the case. Oh, that makes me nervous every time. I have snapped uh, taps off before. This is why I'm trying to give you guys a heads up so then you don't have that same frustration. So as you can see, I'm in there 15 millimeters to where it's bottoming out, okay? So there would be another five mil, but we don't need to go any further because once your M4 screw starts in there, it'll just keep happily going all the way in now to the end. There'll be enough thread on here to keep that going. That's how you do it, guys, okay? Slowly and patiently, and then you won't have any problems. Okay, let's talk about how we couple our potentiometers to our motor shafts. We do this via some 9.5 millimeter or 3.8 fuel hose or transmission hose. We also use some clear tube or it can be black, it doesn't matter. The important part of this tube is the 10 millimeter outside diameter and the 6.5 millimeter inside diameter because this goes inside our 3.8 or 9.5 millimeter fuel hose because it's a snug fit for our M4 furniture screws here that go into our motor shaft and it's a snug fit for our potentiometer shaft. So let's talk about how we work our furniture screws here into our motor shafts. So this is how we connect our potentiometers to our motor shaft via the M4 0.4 thread pitch bolt that I've just been talking about. Now, just for reference guys, this M4 bolt is cut at 30 millimeters in length. If you can find a 30 millimeter one already and you don't have to cut it, that's great. I can only get 40 millimeter length ones. They do have 30 millimeters, but they're out of stock. So I had to buy 40 millimeter bolts and I've cut them to the right length. Your sleeve for reference is cut at 15 millimeters. So that gives us 15 millimeters of thread to wind into our shaft for a nice secure fit. So we'll do this up quite tight when we do it with a screwdriver. The inside tube that we talked about, the 10 millimeter outside diameter, 6.5 inside diameter, will slide over our little assembly here first, like so. Then you'll take your 9.5 millimeter slash 3.8 fuel hose or transmission hose, and that will go over the top. That will slide on like so. Okay, all the way in. It'll be a tight fit, that's what we want. Then you'll get a 10 millimeter or three eight hose clamp and you'll slide that up and we'll do that up firm so then our hose can't turn on our screw. Now this side here will have our potentiometer bracket. Our inside tube is already threaded into our three eight or 9.5 millimeter fuel hose. Your potentiometer will come through the bracket 
and then it'll push in to our coupling here, right? Then you'll put a hose clamp on and you'll tighten the hose clamp up on the potentiometer shaft as well. This way you've got a firm connection between your motor and your potentiometer, but you've got some flex. It's gonna be very hard to get a dead straight connection between these two peripherals. So this allows us some grace if there is any infidelity between the two. Now we could buy a flexible aluminium coupling. You could buy uh, solid couplings. They've got a spiral cut in them, so they're flexible, but they're reasonably expensive. This was a fairly cheap option and it does exactly the same thing. And I've used this for weeks in all of my testing of the rig and it works really, really well. It's a cheaper alternative than buying one of the flexible couplings. I will get back to you uh, when we get up to the installation of our potentiometers about the lengths. This is just a sample piece here and a bit of an overview of how things are going to connect so you've got a bit of a heads up. I'll come back to you with the actual lengths, etc., of what you're going to need um, when we come to our potentiometer installation. Big thumbs up to you guys once again for everyone who's subscribing. Really appreciate that, guys. Thanks for hanging in there. Really having a lot of fun myself putting this video together. Been a great experience for me. Continues to be that way. Anyway, guys, take care. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And we'll see you next time.